The People Mover has stopped temporarily. Please remain in your car and stay seated at all times. Do not pull down on the safety bar, please. I will lower it for you. All the guys that turn me on, turn me down. Now don't go away, because we have some very special entertainment to follow. W Radio, your information station. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 432. I'm here to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience and bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this podcast, videos, blog, live broadcasts every week, special events, books, audio tours, and more. Whether you're planning your first vacation or love digging down to the secrets, stories, history, trivia, and details, there's something here for you. You can find everything over at www.radio.com and subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. So I invite you to join me this week as we look to the year ahead and our top 10 things we're looking forward to experiencing in Walt Disney World in 2016. With so much to see, do, and eat in the next 12 months, we're going to look at what we're anticipating most and why, and then I'm going to ask you to share yours as well. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week and pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package then stay tuned to the end of the show. I'll have more information about upcoming meets of the month, special events on the road, and lots more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. As we ended 2015 with our look back at the year in review in Walt Disney World and the cruise line and some other parts of the Disney parks, I ended with some of my short and long-term predictions for the parks and resorts. But this week, I really want to concentrate on what we know or think we know that's coming in the next 12 months. Because I think as Disney fans, it's fun to look ahead and get excited for what's on the horizon. And hopefully, like me, you like gathering around a table, usually full of food, and just talk about the things that simply make us happy about going to Walt Disney World. So this week, that's exactly what I want to do. I don't inv- I want to invite you to join me and a friend at the table, so grab a plate and a seat, uh, with another one of my friends, a man who, like Madame Bonfamille, plans on leaving the fortune he amassed, it's from Celebrations Magazine, to his cats. He is Tim don't ever call me bananas again, Foster. Timmy, welcome back, and Happy New Year. A Happy New Year to you, and thanks for the, what's got to be the most confusing intro <laughs> you've ever given me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, by the way, I complaint to the management. I got no plate of food here. Um, well, you're doing it wrong. You're doing what? it wrong. Because you should know, never listen to the show, Hungry. Certainly never record on an ah. empty stomach. So if I, I could, pro- I was promised right. food. So a, as we kick off 2016, if I could bring you instantly, like like a Star Trek, tra- I can't say Star Trek. I have to go Star Wars. A Star yeah. Wars. If I could beam over somehow uh, some food item from Walt Disney World to kick off our first recording of 2016, what would it be? I'm a Star Trek fan too, so you can uh, transport it. There. Oh, that's okay. Uh, not funnel cakes. So everyone can stop sending me those. Uh, cream spinach. Cream spinach. Where? <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, that's the other thing everyone's sending me, thanks to you. What would you like them? If I could, but if I could ship you one thing from Walt Disney World, your food of choice. I would like a – ooh, ooh. That's uh, – Time's up. You lose. You I want nothing. a creme brulee. You lose. Chris. Good day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. I, I want to. Uh, I want to get right into Claire this. Claire from France. Oh my god! <laughs> because uh, I think what's interesting about looking forward to 2016 is, and somewhat what I alluded to, is we're going to talk about the things that, as of the day that we're recording this at the beginning of the year, you know what we know, right? What we know so far, and for me, I'm excited about. What we don't know. I say it all the time that the surprises are the best. The things that we don't know that are going to come 
like that happened in 2015, the surprises are the things that we enjoy most or, or I look forward to most, right? The things that I can't put on this list because I don't know what's coming. But I'd like to hear in our top 10-ish uh, things that we're looking forward to in Walt Disney World in 2016. So I don't want you jumping ahead and talk about Star Wars Land and the world of Pandora and Magilla Gorillaville or whatever they want to acquire next. I want you to talk about what you know is coming in 2016. And I said Magilla Gorillaville because secretly it's what I hope that they acquire next. So I want you to kick it off with number one or five on your list. Well, you knocked out half my list there. Because <laughs> once again, you set the rules up to, you know what? I'm the done. rules are there ain't no rules. We just make I'm them up done. as we go along. All right. Well, speaking of rules, I'm breaking the rules right off the bat. I'm going off the board with the very first one. You're a loner, Dottie, a rebel. Yeah. Nice. I'm not going to Walt Disney World. Yeah. You know that this was podcasted about, right? It's called WDW Radio it, 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 yeah, for yeah, a yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. This technicality. I'm going to the movies. Is one of the things, I so wanted you to sing Let's All Go to the Lobby like you Let's did. Let's all go to the lobby. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Now, one of the, thing, one of the Disney things, see, I, I, I'm making this all Disney thing that I'm looking forward to next year, which I didn't think we'd cover, so I'm just going to sneak it in, is not the parks, but the films and all the new films that are slated to come out in 2016. And uh, so I think Finding Dory is the animated movie I'm most looking forward to. I think probably everyone's looking forward to, but let's not overlook Zootopia and Moana coming out in late 2016. But uh, being as Finding Nemo is one of my favorites, I'm looking forward to Finding Dory very much, of course. And then as, as I'm going to the movies lately to see some, some science fiction thing that's going on right now, uh, <laughs> I just saw the preview for The Jungle Book, which looks very, very cool. Um, then we have Alice Through the Looking Glass coming, Pete's Dragon coming. But I'm going to go – this is cheating. I know this is cheating, but I'm going to say it now. Star Wars Episode Eight. I know it's in 2016, but I'm looking for the trailers that will come out around Christmas next year. So, bam. That's what I'm looking for. Come I, on. Know, I, 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 come my, on. I, come my on. My head, I, I'm really... And, and with fl- that, I'm giving you a softball. For flames your- from the side of my face because I, I'm reeling with that. Because I kind of dig that you went off the grid a little bit <laughs> and you went to the movies. And then I was waiting because you mentioned like 11. Well, so I'm like, all right, one? he's, he's going to... The big payoff at the end is when he says Captain America Civil War. Or he that, could, well, okay. you potentially yeah, could have blown true. my tiny little mind if you'd have been like, dude... I'm digging Doctor Strange in November. Like I'm feeling a little Benedict Cumberbond or Cumberbach or whatever his name is. And I then went cartoons. And then I said, okay, car. You just called him a cartoon. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, look, he's going Star Wars. He's uh-huh. going to say Rogue One. And you said Episode Eight, and the internet collectively lost its mind. What? Aren't? Did you not hear about Rogue One, a Star Wars story? No. December. Sir, come on, man. I, I'm, I'm letting you, I'm giving you a softball. December here. 16th, bro. Finish. The countdown is on. I've got my little countdown clock Whoa. going in my head. Well, there you go then. It's, 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 a, it's a, like a more backstory. Many Bothans died. We're going to learn about the Bothans dying. It's <laughs> about stealing the planet. I was the wondering Death Star. about them. No spoilers. No spoiler. But uh, yeah, man, I think this is, I think this is, I look, it's a great time to be a Disney fan. In the parks, out of the parks, on the cruise line, and you're right, at the movies. I think the slate of movies that's coming in 2016 looks really, really good. Which one are you most excited for and which one maybe not? Which one do you do you really – I mean, other than Finding Dory, maybe – Oh, there, I have to kick that one out right away? Um, I, I, so, I, so there's a reason why I was leading you with that well, weird right. question. Because I, I see Pete's Dragon in August uh-huh. – and I'm like, happy birthday to me. But right. then I'm like, wait a minute, man. Like, I loved, I loved the original Pete's Dragon. Um, the, the original, I want to call it somewhat animated 1977 film. Let's not talk about my crush on Helen Reddy. Um, we just did. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, that's one of those films that you almost feel, hey, this one doesn't need to, nor should it be, remade right 
There's only yeah. one Jim Dale. There's only one Mickey Rooney. There's, look, there's only one Red Buttons and Shelly Winters. Um, <laughs> I don't have my bath in May. But um, so, you know, I'm excited because I love the character. I want to see a new generation be introduced to it. But you also worry about a movie that's such a timeless classic getting remade. Well, you know, I sort of, and I don't know much about it other than having seen the trailer, but I, the same thoughts went through my head with the Jungle Book, too. And, um, I mean, I'm excited about it, but it's, it's definitely darker and scarier, at least the trailer was. Not, in 3D, it's really scary. But um, uh, I guess you could say that with all the remakes and reboots that are getting made, like, you know, do we, do we... Do we like them? Do we need them? Well, I don't see. I'm not concerned about Jungle Book for two reasons. One, because it's live action. And number two, I got two okay. words for you, my brother. Yes. But John. You're rough. What, what is it? Well, right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the two words I have for you are John Favreau. Okay, I'm in. Uh, I love that man. I, and I know. I love that, that man because who's the wild <laughs> man now from Rudy makes me cry every single time I see it. <laughs> the man launched with the help of Kevin Feige. Obviously, Marvel Studios with Iron Man. I think Chef was a brilliant film. I, I love him as a director. I, I love him as an actor. So I have implicit trust in him in this movie. Oh, look, see what I did there? Trust in him, trust in me. But because it was animated before and it's live action now, I'm not as concerned with that. And look, after I saw what they did with Maleficent, which was very much a surprise for me, and I think a lot of people, yeah. I'm totally digging the Jungle Book, and you're right. The uh, the trailers that we've seen so far, you know, very dark and, and certainly very beautiful, have me very excited for that movie. Yeah. No, it looks very cool. I, I'm anxious to see it. Um, but the Jungle Cruise is one of my all-time favorite animated classics. And, or the Jungle Book. Know, not, the, or the Jungle one's Book. not replacing Jungle the other. I understand that. <laughs> Wait, what, what was that? You said The Jungle Cruise, one of my all-time oh, favorite Jungle movies. Book, well, The Jungle Cruise is one of my favorite films, too. So, If you like The Jungle the Cruise attraction, you're going to love the Skipper Canteen. Just saying. Okay. That's a new restaurant. You and me. There. Done. Making that but happen. We're, next but we're talking down. about 2016. We are. And it, Not well, 2015. Right. You're it bringing up old. <laughs> old. I know. Skipper Canteen was so 2015. That's played. So Gosh, I'm excited for Civil, right. for Civil War. All right. So it, it is, uh, I think it, it is finally my turn. It is finally your turn. Yes, and, after uh, you have demolished my first one, as usual, but that's okay. Like you, to a certain degree, I'm going to step outside the Walt Disney World theme parks. And I'm going to okay. go to the Lake Buena Vista Village Shopping Center, the, the downtown Disney Pleasure Island that used to be. I'm going to Disney Springs. Because believe it or not, after a, a long time of construction walls and traffic and all the other things that were, were making this new destination come together, I think you know, obviously down, Disney Springs is going to finally be, at least to a certain degree, complete in 2016. And I'm excited about this for a lot of reasons. One, I am a local. I see the benefit of this becoming the destination that I'm already seeing that it is in the beginning of 2016, because look, I think that for years, downtown Disney, Pleasure Island, very much lost whatever identity it had. It didn't know what it wanted to be. Was it a place for families? Was it a place for you know college-age people and young adults to go out and go drinking and have fun? Was it a place for older or, or, or couples to go out and have a romantic meal or walk around? It, it didn't really know what it wanted to be. It had an elaborate backstory that nobody really knew about, unless you listen to that old show where we talked about it at, at mm -hmm. length. And I think for a while, there was a lot of confusions as to what Downtown Disney and Pleasure Island were supposed to be. Now, all of a sudden, look at what we're seeing happening. It's doubling in size. It's going from 75 to 150 dining and entertainment and shopping destinations. There are celebrity chef eateries. I love Jock Lindsay's. If you heard the, the restaurant review, I love it not just for the menu, but for the theming and the story. There's an entertainment value. There's a theatrical value to dining in that location. There's more new restaurants. Yay! Shops, other <laughs> themed restaurants in the works. You're going to see things like STK Steakhouse, which has the, the possibility of becoming the best steakhouse on property, bar none, based on what 
STK has done in other locations. The Edison, I'm super excited about. I've heard from friends about what the location is like in Los Angeles and what they're going to bring here. Sprinkles, Blaze, Fast Fired Pizza. There's also celebrity chef Art Smith and Rick Bayless coming in. There's new shops from like Lily Pulitzer, uh, Pandora, Tommy Bahama, Ugg, Zara. So there is a, a lot going on, and I'm really seeing the transformation already. It's got a different feel to it. The live entertainment that's there, the fact that families are walking around there not to run in and run out and go see a movie or go eat and then get out real quick, but you're spending an afternoon or more importantly, an evening there. There's waterside dining. I mean, the list goes on and on. And I think when those walls finally come down and the vistas completely change, Disney Springs is going to, you know, people talk about the fifth gate, the fifth gate. I think Disney Springs is going to be the fifth gate without it being a theme park. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> you had I, no I, idea I, about I, <laughs> No, I, 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 um, um, I always tended to be at the parks more than downtown Disney, um, ex- except when I would, you would bring me there for food, which was always a nice treat. But, um, but having been down there just recently over the holidays, it, um, you can see what's coming. And uh, like I said, the new, um, uh, just the, the, the new feel of the place. And the excitement, and and it is very exciting. And and from I'm one of those people. For me, it, it hopefully will become more of a destination than downtown Disney was before. As cool as downtown Disney was, and it was neat. It wasn't usually a place where we decide we're going to go for the afternoon or the evening or whatever. Um, uh, but now, it hopefully, will be more of a destination. And from what I, what I've seen and what I'm sure you've seen, it's already looking fabulous and feeling just fun. And, and look, I, fun. I get that you don't love food as much as I do. Look, they have yeah, cupcakes. I know. I have to they watch you. It's embarrassing, you know. So. But, but I see places like now, and, and Morimoto Asia, I think, is a great example. Mm-hmm. It, it's such a different dining experience. Um, excellent menu. It's it's not formal dining, but it's upscale ga- dining. I think there's a, a big difference. But they have an outside upstairs terrace overlooking what is right now mostly construction but things like that outside dining area that's going to be the hot spot that's going to be one of the places to go the same thing at stk like that's going to have a a dj and uh, a rooftop dining so all of a sudden it is going to be more just about going to get something to eat or Mm -hmm. running in and shopping so going to world of disney or once upon a toy and getting out i think it's going to be like hey Let's go spend the evening in uh, in Disney Springs. And still, one of my favorite underappreciated quote unquote attractions is the boat ride from Old Key West down to Disney Springs. Well, then you're going to love how much more waterfront, waterside, and on water yep. experiences are going to be there. Yeah, I looked I, again. Again, we were there over Christmas. It you know it was breathtaking as we got. Uh, as we motored in and, and died, it was just breathtaking looking at it. And we were there at night. Everything was lit up. It was fabulous. So, yeah, lots to look forward to there. Lots of food. Your treat. <sighs> Gosh. Uh, dude, it's on me. You Your fly, treat. You fly. I'll buy. You fly. All right. You, you've recorded this. Yes. So <laughs> I want you to know. All right. I'm going over to one of my favorite attractions in all of Walt Disney World over in Epcot. The Going Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow? That Epcot? That Epcot! Yes, sir! Lou Mangiello. Um, one of my favorite attractions of all being Soren. And looking forward to the uh, Soren Around the World film experience that will be coming to Soren next year. Thankfully, with another theater. So hopefully, the, uh, the wait time will go down a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> Um, but that, that, that's one of my you know, all-time favorite attractions. It's uh, hopefully going to be even bigger and better. Now we get to go around the world and see the Great Wall of China, uh, the Plains of Africa, Monument Valley in Colorado. Um, uh, so, so it sh- hopefully should be really breathtaking uh, with, the, yeah, hopefully with a beautiful soundtrack that it's always had. Um, and it just it's just nice nice to have an update to an attraction I loved for years, um, and I could still ride it every day 
from now on, but it's nice that we'll see something new. And of course, there'll be surprises in store, I'm sure, um, and where they'll hide the evergreen smell or the orange smell <laughs> or new smells that they might have. But um, um, that's, uh, that's something I'm very much looking forward to soon. Not looking forward to it closing, but not for long, hopefully, and we'll all have a new, a new ride. So this was on my list as well, um, yes. sort of under the umbrella of overall Epcot additions. And look, what I <laughs> like about this is really how it's an update to an attraction that didn't necessarily need an update. And what I mean by that is we just passed the Christmas season when waits for Soren were in the 180, 220 mm-hmm. minutes. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but what I'm saying is whether it's Christmas or September or any time of year... Soren is still far and away, maybe a close second is, is Test Track, the most popular attraction at Epcot Center. It has a, a great rewritability factor for those of us who are locals or go relatively often, and there's still the wow factor, and I see, still see people the first time they ride it that are blown away. Yes, we want to see the 4K screens, like they have, and I get it, but the attraction itself didn't need to be updated, but the fact that it is is very impressive to me, and I appreciate that as a guest. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, like you said, Africa and whatever these far, fl- far flung lands, to quote <laughs> Disney, that they are going to go to. Obviously, um, having the additional theater there is going to cut down on the lines, which are going to be much longer because it's a brand new attraction. Well, yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> but- so it's going to help sort of uh, create a-, a great balance. Yeah. So Thank I think, you. So I think that you got nervous Oops. when I said Epcot additions, as if you have have more in Epcot. Well, I I may have another that I'm looking forward to, but it's okay, your well, turn, no, young no, no. sir. I so, am not uh, going to. Uh, you know, I I know you don't really bring a lot to the table when you come here, so I'm not going to take any. Wow. <laughs> I love you, probably. Wow. All right, so I Merry am. Merry Christmas. Um, I am going to go. Um, what I'm going to say next might not make a lot of sense when I initially oh, say it. So I'm going to quote a, a very wise man who said, <laughs> <laughs> Snozberries taste like snozberries. No, a wise man who once said, go with me here. And I'm going to Disney's Hollywood Studios. What? What? <laughs> I'm going to, look, because Disney's Hollywood Studios is going to change dramatically. And I know you think initially it's a negative thing, but you know Lou Mangiello. I always look on the positive side of things. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the changes coming at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Again, maybe going back to some of what we don't know, because look, I think obviously we're, we're excited about what is coming long term in terms of Toy Story Land and the Star Wars experiences. But I think that Disney is going to add new experiences that we don't necessarily know about yet in the interim. So, for example, there are small things. Look, Club Disney, for a lot of people, might not seem like a big deal, right? But that adds three of my favorite things. Dancing, snacking, and recharging all in the same place. But it's one of those things that I've gotten such great feedback from people that they're, they are enjoying and they see their kids. Do you remember the original Club Disney? Yes. Do you remember what that was? That yes. it opened uh, up in um, in California. It was like this playground uh i think they had one in arizona and colorado i think they were supposed to have one in in chicago um it was supposed to be like these regional entertainment venues didn't really work very well Uh, for a little while they called um lilo's playhouse over at the polynesian club disney but i digress um club villain is coming later on and look i think that more Star Wars themed experiences are going to start to roll out at Disney's Hollywood Studios even as we lead up to the official grand opening in probably 2018 for Star Wars lands. Look, we're seeing things like Symphony in the Stars, the new fireworks, the Star Wars Marathon is coming, not just to the studios, but sort of uh, all around Walt Disney World with the sort of the dark side here in Walt Disney World and the light side over out in Disneyland. So as a Star Wars fan, I start to get excited for what's coming. But even as the landscape changes and we know the construction walls are going to start going up, I think, again, this is one of those places that I'm, I'm maybe keeping my fingers crossed a little bit, but I'm hoping to see in the next year 
what they do to balance all of the construction that's going to be going on to bring new, even albeit temporary experiences to Hollywood studios. Okay. That's it. That's all you gave me was an okay. <laughs> I had to throw a go with me in here just, just for fun. <laughs> you had me at Star Wars. You know, That's the a- whole Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader. I'll, yeah. I'll explain well, it to you. I don't who- want to spoil anything. Don't spoil anything. You and me, club, club, uh, club, Disney, baby. <laughs> yes, I'm in. I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm just going to go with you. <laughs> you said go me. with me, so I'm going with you. <laughs> All right, moving on back to you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, no, I'm, I'm checking off all the 20 things you just knocked off my list, so can't talk about that, can't talk about that, can't talk about <laughs> that. I'm going back to Epcot since you hinted at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, this is a minor one, and I understand going into this one that this one is not without a little controversy to it. But um, I am looking forward to seeing what occurs in the Norway Pavilion. Oh, I thought there was the return of the Lumberjack show. I thought no. that's what- <laughs> Oh, is that coming back? <laughs> now, uh, as we, uh, in, the, in the Norway Pavilion, of course, we're, we're looking forward to uh, Frozen Ever After coming in place of Maelstrom, um, which uh, was one of the, well, the most popular attraction of the few that were back in World Showcase, um, which we've talked about many times, though, um, being... It wasn't, uh, it wasn't really the most popular attraction in in... I mean, we talk about this too. I mean, I'm not so sure that I would give you that Maelstrom was one of the most popular attractions in Epcot. No, I, in World Showcase. Considering how many attractions there are in That's World Showcase. That's what Showcase. I meant. It's <laughs> the only one there. So it's definitely, so it was definitely it, in the top got, five. It was it definitely in the top five attractions out. in World Showcase. But, um, but to my chagrin and yours, we talked about this. I was always disappointed that people would bypass the film, um, which I thought was beautiful. But for various reasons, uh, not to mention the popularity of a certain motion picture that came out. Um, Norway gets the privilege of getting a Frozen overlay on it, attraction-wise. Um, which I, I, Now, I'm greatly looking forward to it, and having seen the, con- the concept art for it, it looks like it's going to be beautiful and breathtaking and everything that it should be. Um, now, I don't, I don't know your thoughts, and I'll ask you, but I know, uh, you know with Mexico and Grand Fiesta Tour, uh, there's always a question: Do do we like World Showcase pavilions uh, the way they are were originally intended to be? Uh, you know, little s- slices of life from the host countries, and that's it. Or uh, is it okay to introduce the element of Disney in there and put in, uh, you know, Donald Duck in in uh, Grand Fiesta Tour and so on, like introducing the Disney characters into this? So. Um, so it is with a little uh, a, a pang of regret or, or whatever that I, I see Frozen coming to Maelstrom because I did appreciate Maelstrom the ride, but being able to explore Norway and, and to see the different aspects of their culture and the country, which is beautiful, um, was the intention of the pavilion. And now we're going into the to movie, uh, which hopefully will still have some elements of Norway, the country, to see. Um, but we've seen it already. The, the Stave Church now has frozen exhibits in it instead of um, the former exhibits that were purely, uh, you know, looks at uh, ancient Norway Vikings and ships and so on. Now, I I'm, will say I'm, I'm, I am okay with it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious what your thoughts are, Lou Mangiello, on that whole Disney and World Showcase thing. I want to play devil's advocate for just a moment. Play devil's advocate. That's because I want my parents to know that their law school money uh, for my education is actually going to hopefully pay off at some point <laughs> in the future. You know, I don't recall, little Timmy Foster, Uh-oh. anybody losing their marbles, their brains falling out of their heads, or screaming, Good Gandhi, man! Why are the three caballeros in Mexico? I, I never heard that. And actually, I recently, swear we had a show about that very topic. When and <laughs> that's right. And when they just added the animatronics in, a surprise, yes. surprise, just a Which, few. Which, by the way, very cool. I, they're beautiful. I, I, I had yeah. no idea when I went on and there they were. No, well, wait, wait right? a minute. Nice see, surprise. See, those surprises like you talked about. Anyway. I didn't see anybody 
lose their minds and, and complain that the three caballeros were in Mexico. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, maybe because that was a, it's a generational thing, right? Maybe Frozen is not necessarily resonating with some of the people on Twitter the way that the nostalgia of Three Caballeros is. I will tell you that my kids were eight and ten, friends' kids, listeners' kids, who I, listeners who who talk about their kids, they're ecstatic for Frozen coming in there because it's their Lion King, it's their name your favorite Disney movie from when you were a kid. It's the thing that's very relatable to them. It is the thing from a shareholder's perspective that you're going to say, hey, when somebody hears that maybe hasn't come to Disney in a couple of years, that a new Frozen attraction is coming, that might make mom and dad look at each other and say, hey, maybe we need to take little Timmy and, and Timolina down to Walt Disney World and take a trip so they can go see it. I'm not sure Maelstrom ever did that. Right, And I'm not saying that I didn't like Maelstrom, but I can understand why this attraction is going in there. So I think you can't talk about the frozening, the, the characterization of World Showcase without talking about other places like Grand Fiesta Tour. And look, we, we talked about this, you're right, in, in a prior show. I don't want to rehash it. But, you know, there were plans at some points for World Showcase to have a Pinocchio-themed village. There was going to be an Alice in Wonderland themed attraction, Snow White. I mean, the characters at one point were considered for World Showcase. So this is not like blasphemous <laughs> that they're having uh, characters in there. And look, I-, I will make the same devil's advocate argument that I make for the world of Pandora. And that is, I don't think that you have to love the movie itself or the characters or the songs or whatever it may be to appreciate how beautiful this attraction may be. I think you hit on it. You mentioned the concept art is spectacular, mm-hmm. right? Thinking about going through the Ice Palace, we talked about you know lost attractions of what this the original sort of uh, Ice Queen story and, and attraction was going to be for Fantasyland. So you you think about this this icy blue world and the North Mountains and all the things that they are able to bring in visually from a storytelling and entertainment perspective. I'm with you, man. That is one of the things. It was obviously on my list, and I think Frozen. I think the Frozen attraction is going to surprise, in a pleasant way, a lot of people who might have criticized the decision to bring it in there. Well, if I may, devil's advocate, back to you, young sir. <laughs> now I hear you. I and I, I, I am looking forward to it. I'm sure it will be beautiful. I have no doubt it's going to be breathtaking and beautiful. Um, and something I'll see again and again and again. Um, my hope is that when it's all said and done, that Norway is still represented. And and I will I will tell you my um, as far as Grand Fiesta Tour goes, um, like I'm myself don't have any problem with it. But I will tell you, my daughter, that that generation. <laughs> not 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 us that have been there since 1982 and i remember the good old days when they used to have uh, this is the, um the next generation um my daughter t- has told me she she's was disappointed seeing disney characters come in and replacing uh, like taking over the idea of sharing the culture and the uh, the art and the uh, the people and every of the host country and replacing it with a disney you know ride through a movie and I, I I'm hoping with uh, uh, with Norway and uh, Frozen Ever After that they you still get a sense of Norway when you go into the pavilion and it doesn't you know t- totally turn into a Frozen attraction that might as well be in Fantasyland and it might as well be in Hollywood Studios as opposed to World Showcase. So that's what I hope because I always did enjoy the Norway Pavilion, not just Maelstrom but the entirety of it, including the film and and uh, the gift shop and seeing all the aspects of the country. So I hope that some of that still stays. Tim we'll Foster? We'll see. We'll I agree see. with you. I agree with you a yeah. thousand percent. Yeah. I, I hope, and they have made mention that they will continue to embrace the, the culture and the heritage of Norway because that's where it is. And I think that you made a great point. You don't want it to be an attraction that could exist in fantasy land exactly the same. I want it, and, right. I, and I'm hopefully trusting that they will do that. That being and, said, my counterpoint, devil's advocate to your counterpoint, <laughs> devil's advocate of my of devil's advocacy, is that I hope that when they do that, 
I hope yeah. that when they do represent Norway, and I know it's in a, it's obviously taking place at a different time, but I hope it's, I hope it's more like the final scene in Maelstrom when you went to the seaside village mm-hmm. and less of an oil rig, which I well, know should not have necessarily been the payoff for the attraction and sort of the, the big reveal at the end. I think a lot of people have said, you know, there's a lot more to Norway than just, you know, yeah. big oil rigs. And that's why I, I, my favorite part of the attraction was where you would disembark from the boat because I think mm-hmm. that little quaint seaside village, which probably a much closer representation to Norwegian culture. Sure. And, and I know uh, with Maelstrom and the Norway Pavilion, it was aging and showing its, you know, showing its age. The film hadn't been updated, and there's a whole story to that. So, I mean, it, it is a much welcomed addition to the pavilion, but hopefully. Um, it, you know what? I, I, you know what? I, I, am, I am confident, having said all that, I am confident that Disney will do right, not only by frozen but by the host country and it'll be wonderful amen be i have no doubt it'll be absolutely beautiful nice whose turn is it <laughs> i think uh i think it's mine and i hope that you are on board pardon the accidental pun of what i want to talk about well, i hope you're not going wrong go because I, go, I only got one left so well, that's go ahead. fine i'm going to Disney's <laughs> animal kingdom no, 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 no. I mean, I'm going. going to Disney Animal Kingdom, but I'm going to make a left turn. And I'm going to go somewhere no, else. No, that's where I'm going. Well, that's fine. We, let's, you know what? Let's all go together. Let's go to Anim- Animal <laughs> okay. Kingdom together. Look, Disney's Animal Kingdom is changing. And by way of comparison, like Hollywood Studios, I think more than you think, not just later, but now. Not now, but now. And I think what's important to note that in 2016 – that is the year. This is this is the year of of Disney's Animal Kingdom rising like the phoenix, Tim Foster, because oh. it is going to become not just a but the nighttime park at Walt Disney World. Forget calling it the, the quote unquote full day park. It is going to be the place to go, starting in 2016 and leading into 2017. Obviously, we're both talking about things like the Rivers of Light, right? Where they finally are going to utilize the wonderful Discovery River, which, again, never was able to find what it wanted to be. Was it a transportation system? Was it an attraction? Was it a ride? Was it a place to get from one side of the park to the other? Now we're going to have these hosts really sort of bringing this gift of light, not just to the river, but to us as well, uh, with lantern vessels and water and lights. And you can think things like uh, World of Color sort of coming there, but it's a great storytelling journey and vision and we've seen some of the concept art of the lanterns and the water screens and the again integrating the animal imagery in there and the stage what i love about it man is the stage is not a physical stage that's being built it is the natural stage of the river itself and you talk about a way to cap off an evening and, yes, make people stay past 4 or 5 o'clock into Disney's Animal Kingdom. That is is going to be it. And if you look at some of the names that have you know worked on it, like Michael Curry and Mark Mancina and, and the Disney Nature people, obviously there's a guy you may have heard of, Tim, named Joe Rohde. Um, you know, he talks about this, this um, giant sort of crescendo, crescendo at the end, not just to end the Rivers of Light show, but to end the, your day at Disney's Animal Kingdom, uh, I think that's something that people need to be very, very, very excited about. I am excited. I am on the record. <laughs> you sound it. And, and this is, <laughs> is exactly what I was going to talk about. So I'm going to cheat and just continue to talk about yeah. it, but I'm going to count this as my next one. Um, now, th- this is curious because, well, to me anyway, because uh, Star Wars coming to Hollywood Studios – I love it. Everybody loves it. Toy Story coming to Hollywood Studios. I love it. When I heard that Avatar was coming to Animal Kingdom land or to Animal Kingdom, I was okay. I, I don't know if I'm going to get bombarded on the internet with this, but I was not the biggest fan of the film Avatar. I will admit it. Um, but you don't have to be. Like that's I don't the have point. to. That's what I'm getting. You, you, I, there's a. There's a. Reason to my madness here. Just <laughs> listen. We're all. I believe. I, I've. I, I've uh, learned at the feet of the master, so I under. I see what's coming here. Um, no, I. I went into it 
skeptical and hesitant and not not ready to really embrace why is this other movie coming in to my Disney park when it's not a Disney movie and what's going on here. But I, having seen the concept art for rivers of rivers of light, which like, uh, frozen ever after is absolutely spectacular. The concept art that's out there. And I had a moment in over this holiday season, um, for people who – this is a very local story, so sorry if you don't know what I'm talking about, Lou. But near near me in the great northeast here, um, there is a place called Longwood Gardens, which is an outside expansive uh, ground filled with gardens and uh, horticultural exhibits and stuff that you can go and tour. And one of the exhibits they were just running in the past uh, fall was uh, – I believe it was called, well, what it was, was Lights at Night. Um, And it took place at night, and basically what it was, lights would shine in all these dizzying patterns on on the trees and the bushes and the flowers and the gardens uh, against a backdrop of this beautiful music. And the epiphany I had as I was watching through the, uh, walking through this was, you know, this is probably what, this is what, um, Avatar Land, Rivers of Light is going to look like times a thousand because it's going to be Disney. But it was, it was absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. So for me, I had kind of a transformation. While I may not be the biggest fan of the movie, like you said, you don't have to be. What's coming to the Animal Kingdom is going to be absolutely stunning and beautiful to look at. And from what we can see and what we've heard – unlike anything we've ever seen before. And it's going to be breathtaking. And something, if you never saw Avatar, never heard of Avatar, I'm sure it won't make a bit of difference. It's still going to be one of the most memorable things you'll ever see at Walt Disney World. And just on that basis alone, something I'm really, really, really looking forward to. Whether it came from Avatar or wherever it came from. Look, I've said this you know, ad nauseum, like and sure. forgive me for repeating it again, but I do. I wish I had the time and the talent and the licensing to be able to take the three-hour epic that is Avatar and edit it down to a five- to seven-minute video, not about the movie, but about the world of Pandora, mm-hmm. and let people see that as the trailer, as the coming attraction for what Pandora, the world of Avatar, is going to be. Because I, I felt that way when I first heard the announcement, because look, Avatar is not my favorite movie on the planet either. I don't own it. I don't watch it all the time. I've seen it one and a half times maybe, but I appreciate the beauty and the storytelling and the message that James Cameron put in the film. When I saw the concept art and then I saw the model at D23 Expo, I was like, yeah, man, you, 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 I think you have the right belief in what they are doing. And then all of a sudden now you're starting to see these true floating mountains. And I'm not even using that air quote. They are floating mountains taking place vertically in Disney's Animal Kingdom and knowing what those bioluminescent forests are going to look like and looking at the concept art on the walls and seeing a dragon, which looks oddly familiar to something we saw in Fantasyland back in 2012, whatever it may be, and knowing what a banshee looks like in the film and it could potentially look like in this park, I'm more excited than ever. And if people aren't necessarily on board yet, that's fine. And I'm hoping, and like other parts of the park, I'm believing and trusting based on what they have delivered in the past, that they are going to bring that world, that world that we saw in Avatar, to life and really make that one of the first, and I think especially as we lead into things like Star Wars Land, truly immersive environments. We talk about that all the time. You know, Jungle Cruise is immersive and this is immersive and Cars Land is immersive. But here, where there are no cast members, there are people who are part of this Ace Corporation and they exist in this other world that you are being transported to when you go through that threshold. I am expecting, uh, again, maybe some of the people who were not excited or were negative about it, I'm really hoping for for their sake and for our sake as as fans that their opinions change when they do step into that land, which I think is going to be a, a game changer in terms of storytelling. Yeah, I, I I tell you, when I saw the Rivers of Light concept art come out, it totally. I, I think I went 
full circle around there because I, I hadn't been excited about it and questioning it, but but goodness, it's beautiful. Well, and when you think and about- I, like I said, I got a little sneak glimpse of what it could look like, you know, at at Longwood Gardens near me and I, I, knowing it's going to be a thousand times as spectacular as what I saw. And remembering those parts of the movie, those parts of the movie I loved. I, I always said, I, I thought the story was okay, but man, that was such a beautiful movie to watch. But when you saw them flying on a banshee, right, yeah. over this, this beautiful, like, you know, lush, again, back to at night, the bioluminescence. Didn't mm-hmm. you say, man, I would love to do that? Yeah, that's, that's what I was hoping. When, when I first heard this, it's, if they can bring that part to life, all right, I'd be in because that was – But that's what Flight of Passage is going to be. Right? I know. I think that's Flight why I'm of excited. Passage, that's right, why and I I'm think excited, Lou Mangiello. I think Flight of Passage is going to be the next real e-ticket attraction. Like yep. you talk about things that are e-ticket attraction. I, I think Seven Dwarfs Mine Train – is a wonderful attraction. Is it an e-ticket by sort of the, you know, looking back on 40 plus years of what e-tickets were? Possibly not. It might be a D ticket, but I see Flight of Passage and I'm like, yeah, man, this to me, this flying over, uh, you know, this these these floating mountains and getting this top-down view of this world of Pandora, that to me is what an e-ticket attraction is going to be. Now you know I'll never go on it. Of course so not. But I can tell, tell you all, all about, about it. it. I will yeah, tell, tell you. Yeah, tell me all about it. it. Take a movie of it and uh, and so. show it. Then then we'll discuss. We'll discuss over food. So and look, continuing on and sort of going back. I know it's my turn. I'm, I want to stay at Disney's Animal Kingdom because I think you know when we talked about Rivers of Light and it becoming a nighttime park, you know there are other things that are coming to that park as well. Again, the things that we don't know about. But one of the things that a lot of people or maybe some people don't know about in terms of some of the other things that are coming at night. And I, and I know that there are other experiences that have not been announced as yet, but you know, we see on the, this on Cinderella castle, the castle projection show and how it makes that castle really come to life. That's what's going to happen over at the tree of life as well. So you're not just going to have these projections that are going to bring this tree of life to life but there's going to be things that you need to look up at vertically, but look across at horizontally because there's going to be performance on performers on the street. So maybe we're going to get some of that torchlight style parade that maybe we've been hoping for for years. And again, the real live performances and entertainment coming into that park, which I love so much. So again, more things at night. Look, and the, the nighttime version of the Kilimanjaro safaris, right, where you not only have a completely different experiences, but new animals as well. There's going to be um, the African wild dogs and hyenas coming to the savannah. So now you almost have to ride it two different times throughout the day and the evening to get those two different experiences. And it'll hopefully be cooler. <laughs> Well, it is Animal Kingdom, which is just, you know. <laughs> but more importantly, Timmy Foster, let, you know, yes. Pandora's great and Rivers of Light sounds nice, but I know what you're really excited most for. Yeah. It's Tiffin's. Absolutely. You don't even know what a Tiffin is, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> so Tiffin's is a new Tiffin's restaurant. Tiffin's is the park's newest eatery, which will open its stores this spring to offer a menu inspired <laughs> by the places the Imagineers travel to when developing Disney's Animal Kingdom. That's where we're going when you show me the film of you throwing up on... I will show you the way to go home, brother, and I will take you to <laughs> Tiffin's. No, but uh, take it away. This is food. This is your wheelhouse. No, listen, it, it's all of our wheelhouse, right? Yeah. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, again, it's you're adding what it is not just a place to grab a burger and fries to the parks, right? You're not adding another quick service eater. You're adding a place that has indoor and outdoor seatings overlooking the waterfront, which I, I just love. I, I just, I'm a sucker for, for waterfront dining. And I love the fact that it's inspired by the places that inspired Animal Kingdom to the Imagineers, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, the first time I heard the word Tiffin was when I did the um, Wild Africa Trek because they sort of do that. They sort of showed like uh, this little... Um, container that they use to carry food while they're traveling on safaris. So I love that their story, you know it's going to have an eclectic menu, you know it's going to be well-themed, you know it's going to have food in it, so instantly I'm excited about going. Of course you are. We're going together. I promise. We go, and you're we go together like Ramalama Lama, Kadinga da Ding Dong. 
Shubop Shawadawa. <laughs> <The> what? <laughs> Uh oh, I just I just hinted to to my days in Greece. <laughs> so you have nothing else on your, uh, uh, on your well, nothing. You kind of you you have a continuing knack of knocking ten of mine out in one shot on your list, which you did a couple times. So I did so not. I will just end on. I'm looking forward to. Well, you alluded to. Well, you said this, and you kind of said I'm not allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. The things that we don't know are coming. The thing, the surprises that are going to happen, um, uh, the regular, the things we ordinarily look forward to each year, the Flower Garden Festival, the Food and Wine Festival, holidays at Walt Disney World, and what new surprises are in store at each of these events, and what are we going to see? And I, and I can't wait. And I don't know what they are. And, I, and there's a lot coming in the year after, in the year after that. I'll tell you one thing I'm excited for. I don't know when it's opening, but I'm sure it's not next year. Our Wilderness Lodge bungalows. Yeah, baby. Which we I gotta, heard about. Gotta, which, you know what? We're going to go there, and we're going to stay there, and we'll, yeah. do, we'll live broadcast from yeah. there. How's that? Awesome. You buy, I'll fly. You buy, I'll fly. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, one of my favorite resorts, um, that, that's going to be a spectacular addition to it. There's just so much excitement coming, Lou And I will Where can end- they put it all? I will end uh, on a similar vein, going back yeah. to, again, what we don't know, but what I expect to happen. Because ah. if you do your math, little Timmy Foster, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. I'm sure you have done in advance of uh, preparation for this segment, Absolutely. you know that you do the math and you subtract one and carry the nine. You know that this year, yeah. Walt is the year of the monkey. It is the year of the monkey yeah. and Tim Foster. And it's also the year that Magic Kingdom celebrates its 45th anniversary. <gasps> and you know Boy. that Disney has a habit, especially recently after the Epcot 30th, or 25th, sorry, after Epcot 25th, of starting to celebrate the you know five and zero five. digit milestones. Yeah. So you have to imagine that coming late 2016, we're going to see some sort of celebration of 45 years of Magic Kingdom, of the opening of Walt Disney World. Also, too, keep in mind that at with the timing of this coming in October, which is also about the time that we start ramping up for the holidays, we know that the Osborne lights are going to be closed. We mm. know that there are obviously no more lights of winter at mm. Epcot Center. You might be able to start piecing together some puzzles and say, hey, Maybe we're going to get something for the holidays. Maybe we're going to get some sort of anniversary special. But I anticipate, hopefully, fingers crossed, that the the celebration of Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World for the 45th anniversary is going to bring some of those things that we've alluded to that we don't know are coming, but are going to be very nice, very fun, very memorable, and very welcome surprises. Oh, I can't wait. Flower and Garden's 90 days this year. What? 90 days. What? Well, I'm coming Nine down. Times. Um, Nine I'm gonna times. I'm going to come down and check it out. I haven't seen it before. Check it, listen, the flowers in the gardens are just, they're, they're like, they're like <laughs> decorations on top of all the food that's there. It's like the, the flowers in the gardens, <laughs> they're like parsley on the plates of food that you can have. They're beautiful to look at. You can't necessarily eat them, but man, the food is great and there's a lot of good stuff to look at too. <laughs> all right, I'll buy. There I'll buy. Go. Oh, dude, big mistake. Have you seen me eat, man? Oh, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> can I rewind? Everybody go out and subscribe I've to Celebrations Magazine. I've seen Mag- you eat at the Flower Garden <laughs> Festival. Go subscribe to Celebrations Magazine right now so Tim can uh, pay for my meals yeah, at the I Flower and Garden everybody, Festival. Yeah, I everybody, please. So I have, two, uh, I have two requests for you, the listener. My friend, who has been sitting around the table with me and Timmy Foster. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. Hopefully you uh, you had a snack along the way. I'd like you to please do two things. First, go to celebrationspress.com. Don't just subscribe to the magazine, but Timmy Foster, I love you, brother. You did send me, as you promised to, yes. one copy, so my kids are fighting, uh, Oh, well, I <laughs> one was copy anyway. You're supposed to fill of it Guide up. to the Magic.com, which is bigger. Like you, it's bigger and more beautiful than ever, baby. So I suggest that people go out and order a copy of that, not just for their kids, but for themselves. And then I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you, listener, my friend. What are you looking forward to most in 2016? Right? Let's not jump ahead to start. What, in, what is coming to the parks or resorts that's coming in 2016? There's lots of ways you can let me know. 
You can go to www.radio.com. You can leave a comment on this week's podcast by clicking on the podcast link, clicking on this week's show, leaving a comment there. I'd love it if you tweet me at Lou Mangiello. Go to facebook.com slash Lou Mangiello. Tell me right there, or better yet, I want to hear it, man. I want to hear the passion in your voice. Sell it what you are looking forward to most. Call the voicemail at 407 900 9391. And at the end, make sure you beg for little Timmy Foster to come back because we've got lots, lots of good stuff on the list and on the menu. I'm going to go see Star Wars again. Don't tell me what happened. Me too. I'm so excited. Okay. May the Schwartz be with you. Time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World history or see how well you pay attention to the details, not just in what you see, but sometimes, like this week, in what you hear. If you think you have the answer right, you can enter via email for your chance to win a Disney prize package. Before we get to this week's question, let's go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week I was talking about how happy I was to have finally released my Tomorrowland audio tour in the Magic Kingdom, completing the series of all seven lands, rest in peace Mickey's Toontown Fair, in Magic Kingdom. And so I made last week's question a bit of a scavenger hunt, as it were. I wanted you to find the title of track number eight on the Tomorrowland audio tour, and then tell me what year that attraction, show, resort, whatever it was, opened in Walt Disney World. And the answer was Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, which opened in 1975 in Walt Disney World. Thanks again to the hundreds of you who entered, got this one correct. I took all the correct entries, randomly selected one. And remember, last week you were playing for three prizes. You were playing for a digital copy of my 102 Ways to Save Money for and at Walt Disney World book, all seven of the audio walking tours of the Magic Kingdom, and a brand new hot off whatever kind of press they printed on, WDW Radio iPhone case for your iPhone 5, 6, or 6S. And last week's winner, randomly selected, is Kristen Bright. So, Kristen, congratulations. Send me your address. I'll get your prize package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So as somebody who always looks on the positive, bright side of things completely unapologetically, I thought this was appropriate for this week's contest. Because I want you to tell me, where in the world have you heard this phrase? Look at that. The can's half full. It's that easy. All you need to do is tell me where in the world you've heard that phrase. Email contest at wdwradio.com by Sunday, January 10th at 1159 p.m., This week, you're playing for the 102 Ways book, all the audio tours, and a WDW Radio Magic Band cover. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in this and every week. I also want to thank some new members of the WDW Radio Nation, including Michelle Hopkins and Morgan Goldhammer. If you want to find out how you can help the show and get cool rewards every month, like scavenger hunts, group video calls, monthly care packages from Walt Disney World, and lots more, visit www.radio.com slash support. While you're on the site, be sure and check out our daily blog post, new videos, subscribe to our free email newsletter, and please also join me every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern as I broadcast live on Facebook, whether I'm at the home studio or out in the Disney parks. It's a great way for me to connect you to the experience and for us to chat real time. Follow me at facebook.com slash lumangelo, and if you turn on notifications, you'll get an alert every time I go live. Also, I'd love to hear from you, so if you have a question you want answered on the air, you can email me at lou at wdwradio.com or call the voicemail. Be heard on the air at 407-900-9391. You can also connect with me everywhere on social. I am at Lou Mangello, and of course, nothing beats a handshake and a hug. That's why I do free meets of the month every month in Walt Disney World, as well as other events on the road and 
at sea. So if you visit the events page at wdwradio.com, you can find out about our next meet of the month, which is this Saturday over Marathon Weekend at the Tomorrowland Terrace, as well as upcoming events. There's still room on our Star Wars cruise in February. I'll have details about the New Orleans meet and events February 26th through the 28th. I'll be in the Philippines in March, Iowa in April, Chicago in July, and our big e-ticket adventure leaving out of New York on the Disney Magic in November. Again, visit the events page at www.radio.com. And speaking of being on the road and at sea and in the air, I'm going to be doing a lot of speaking at conferences and at schools this year. So stay tuned for other meetups as I travel on the road. And if there's something that I can do to help you or to come speak to your conference, to your business or to your school, visit lumangelo.com. Click on the speaking tab there. Also, if there's some way that I can help you do what you allow me to do, which is do what I love every single day and maybe turn your passion into your profession with personal mentoring or some small group coaching and help you build your business and brand. Visit lumangelo.com. Click on the work with Lou tab. In fact, my next small mastermind group is launching this week. I have two spots remaining. So if you're interested, visit lumangelo.com and again, click on the work with Lou tab. Thanks, as always, not just to little Timmy Foster from Celebrations Magazine, but Becky Menken and her team from Mouse Fan Travel. Really excited to be working with them again in 2016. Lots of great events we're going to be doing together. And if you're coming to World, Land, Cruise, Adventures by Disney, or anywhere on planet Earth, she and her team can help you answer your questions, give you a free no-obligation quote, all at no additional cost to you. You can visit them over at mousefantravel.com. And as always, my friends, and you are my friends, whether we have met yet or not, all I ask is that if you like the show, please help spread the word. Let others know about it. Tweet out links to this week's episode. Better yet, share it and comment over on Facebook. And please come by, rate and review the show over on iTunes. Thanks to you, we have more than a thousand five-star reviews. You are the ones who got the show to number two overall in iTunes. I want to thank recent reviewers, including Rendar27, Miss Melissa B, Yoga Gen H, Straw House Pictures, and First Order General 1118. I dig it, Force Awakens. Uh, thanks to all of you again. If you visit www.radio.com slash iTunes, it'll give you a link directly on where and how to rate and review the show. And finally, and most importantly, again, as we kick off 2016, I want to thank you again so much for spending and sharing your time with me. And I don't necessarily make resolutions or or set new goals at, at the beginning of New Year's. But for me, it's about doing more. And there's three things I'm going to be doing more for and with you. One, I'm going to live more. I'm going to continue to savor and enjoy and appreciate every single moment and experience, no matter how simple they may be all with a continuing sense of positivity and a smile on my face. And I'm also going to be live more, right? Because out of everything I do, I enjoy the live act interactions with you and creating new relationships more than anything else. And I've always preached and practiced the importance of a handshake and a hug. So I'm going to do even more live events so I can meet and thank and listen to and share and help you. And I've been live broadcasting every week since 2007, but I'm going to do even more. Again, at facebook.com slash lumangelo, beyond the weekly shows, in a lot of unique ways from a variety of different destinations to connect you to some of the experiences and some create some more of those relationships. And the goal is simple, right? I want to do and share things with you and hopefully bring you a little bit of happiness and have a positive impact on you in every way. And I'm going to continue to do something which is a philosophy of how I lead my personal life and my business life. And I hope you do as well. And that's stay hungry. And if you've seen me or met me or heard the show, you know that I don't just mean hungry in the culinary sense of the word, but staying hungry all the time. Right? It's one. It's okay to be to be happy and proud of what you accomplish, but don't get too comfortable. Don't be complacent or, or lazy. Right? It's always about looking to see what's new, what's next, to innovate, create, learn, improve, grow, and hopefully, maybe, inspire and help others. That is what sort of inspires me uh, and lights the fire to do better and to be better because good enough is never just good enough. So, my friend, I hope you stay hungry and know that the best is yet to come. I'd love to hear about what you're going to do in 2016. If you visit facebook.com slash lumangelo, you'll find my post from Saturday, January 2nd. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments as well. 
Thank you again so very much. I do believe that in 2016 and beyond, the best is yet to come, and I hope you will continue and share the journey with me. Have a great, great week. So until next time, see ya. Hi, Lou. My name is Casey, and I just finished listening to your episode, 2015, A Year in Review. And I just wanted to add something that you busted over a little bit. Uh, you talked about the Trolley Car Cafe opening in Hollywood Studios. But in June, actually June 18th of 2015, Creature Comforts, the Starbucks location at Animal Kingdom, opened. And we are very much alive, well, and very busy there. Uh, we actually are selling certain drinks that when you buy them, that you, uh, portions of the proceeds will go to the foundation that helps the Cotton Top Cameron, the adorable little monkeys from Columbia that live across the street from Creature Comfort. And we also have those wonderfully sought after Animal Kingdom You Are Here mugs. So as a Creature Comfort cast member, I just wanted to remind you that we have now completed the Starbucks family uh, by Creature Comfort Animal Kingdom, June 18th of 2015, which is exactly two years after the Main Street Bakery opened. So thank you so much for doing this year in review. It was great to review all of the things that are happening at what I can call my home and my place of work, Walt Disney World. And once again, I hope you and your family have a fantastic new year. Hey, Lou. Rob from California, Maryland, calling you again. Uh, nine miles behind me today was really tough, but made it through. Just want to call and say hello to the WW running team. Wish them good luck. luck. Wish them good luck with uh, the uh, Disney Marathon Race Weekend coming up next weekend. And all you maniacs doing the goofy and the dopey. Uh, good luck to you guys, especially. All right, have a good weekend, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hi, Lou Mangello. Mangello, sorry. Uh, this is uh, Angie Thompson calling from Quinnell, British Columbia, Canada. I love your uh, your podcasts. They're all so good. And I just recently listened to your episode 429, the inside jokes of Walt Disney World and stuff. I've only been there twice. I've been there one for Christmas time and one for my birthday. Um, and um, you were talking about the Stitch Great Escape Ride in your podcast. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Cool. And I wanted to tell you, um, inside there, it, it, the Stitch Great Escape Ride is actually like a prequel to the Lilo and Stitch movies. So if you want to go see it, you go you go to that ride first, then you watch the movies. Um, so I just want to say, like, it's kind of weird that when you watch the ride, Stitch says his name four times. And it's like, how can that be? Because... Stitch didn't really get his name until Lilo gave it to him in Lilo and Stitch the movie um, at the at the dog pound. That's just kind of weird. I think that's kind of an inside joke. Um, maybe you could use that on your other future podcasts if you want. Um, I love your podcast. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work, and I'm looking forward to hearing more of your podcast. Maybe you can do one for Disneyland in Anaheim, California, if you would like. All right. Thank you. Bye. You've got a friend in me. Yeah.